All right, everybody, we're on a Dirt Perfect job today because Dirt Perfect is too busy. So they had to go do some other stuff, paperwork, hang out in the warm garage, and it's Robbie and I today. What's up? Happy New Year. It's cold. But anyway, I got a, we got a course cut and uh, put in here just one course out to the corner. This here is Fox Block. It's not New Dura like you guys have seen on my channel before. But... We've got a 16 foot wall, another 16 foot wall, a four foot wall, and then that wall that goes over to the garage to the right of the door there. It doesn't really matter what length that is. So that one is gonna be the last portion that we stack out. <clears throat> We've got this one set. You can see that the footer was a little bit away from the house and the reason for that is there's a footer here that holds all the brick. So we didn't wanna take that out of there. Um, but we've got that 16 foot from that corner over there where that chimney step out is at 16 feet to here we've got a line painted we've got our 16 feet established to here you see the line painted now we're going to work down this wall here to get this 16 feet established we had to trim a block on that side just a little bit we'll have to trim here in the center get a common established and then we'll have another common over there so we're going to put you here on the table so that you can see us uh, stack this thing out. Stay tuned for more. We got the uh, two courses stacked out. We're just doing two courses here, and then there'll be four inches of concrete on top of that, which puts us right at the bottom of that threshold of that door. You can see we had to stop short because of that footer I explained a little bit ago. And then we took that next course and we went right over top of it. So we'll foam right against the house whenever we're ready for the foam process. And we'll throw us a two by four or something down there to make sure the concrete doesn't come out of that. Over here, we had to trim a block but it still ended up a factory right here so we were able to trim this block yet again on a factory edge and span that gap this four foot wall did not allow us to end up on a factory so we ended up with a common here and we'll strap all that together inside and out and make sure that it doesn't go anywhere and in this wall here yet again you can see we didn't have a step out footer like we did over in that corner but that is two full block with a little bit of piece missing obviously and then that corner shoves the block this way that top corner because it's longer on this side so we trimmed it close to the wall there you can see that's going to be an easy gap to fill and then down there we'll take a piece of plywood and we'll rip it and we'll run it up that bump it tight against the house make sure the concrete doesn't come out of that corner we'll screw it to these studs here so i feel pretty good about it the wall we've eyeballed the wall it looks pretty straight we're getting ready to measure our 16 feet on both sides there to make sure that we have that and then our 16 feet to this outside corner and our 16 feet to that inside corner and then we'll measure off the house and make sure everything measures the same it's good and square and we'll foam our corners and get everything set progress is moving stay tuned for more All right, everybody, we got uh, our corners foamed. You can see that there, inside and out. We got our dimensions set, 16, 16, four, and then that one doesn't really matter because it is uh, it is what it is. Right now, what we're gonna do, we've got our rebar on the inside. We've got our rebar corners in. We did alternate that one lock mechanism so we can slide our verticals down in between the two. Well, now we're going to put the stiff backs on. 
We've got all the dimensions taken, all that set, corners are set. The stiff backs hold the wall nice and straight. The edge of a two by four is typically straight and you can see there's a little bit of gap right there in the middle. <clears throat> so that stiff back will actually take that out. We'll put a screw every third stud. We'll run that stiff back down. We'll run a stiff back here. Run a stiff back on the inside of that wall and on the inside of that wall. And that's something I want to explain if you watch Dirt Perfect's channel. On basement walls, we put the stiff backs on the outside. The reason for that is we run a string line on the inside of the basement to measure the distance off the wall from the corners. We'll do the same thing here, but the stiff backs on the inside of this wall allow us to put our support braces on the inside so when the concrete truck comes in here to pour this we don't have to worry about our support braces being in the way yes with this job he's going to stay on the concrete here anyway however we want to keep those support braces to the inside of that crawl space if you will <clears throat> to kind of keep them out of the way of working on the outside of the wall here so robbie and i are going to continue to put these stiff backs on get it all stiff backed together and then put our supports on the inside of the wall all right everybody as you can see we've got all of our stiff backs on the inside of the wall there runs over and around and back we've got our common splice there strapped up got those common straps together i wanted to um kind of walk through the differences here of fox block and nudura you've seen on my channel that i quote nudura for dirt perfect I'm here to tell you, um, this block is more rigid when it comes to squishiness, if you will. Uh, the product seems to be a little more dense. But with this product, where you see the two layers there, you got the bottom layer and the top layer, so it's two courses, kind of like that right there. There's nothing that locks them together. So as I was trying to screw these stiff backs together, the block kept peeling up and moving, which in turn made my wall move so i had to re readjust that end over there numerous times i had the corners foamed you can see i ripped the corners off there the reason for that is this corner here sorry about that about dropped you this corner here when i put these stiff backs on again i strapped my common first and set this four foot dimension preset my 16 foot dimension from the outside of the wall to that wall right there after i got my stiff backs on it had pulled this wall which was already set already strapped on the common it should have never moved but the block kept coming popping off because i'd had to you got obviously got to put pressure to get a screw to go in these plastic studs here and it just it just made everything move it's not that it's a horrible system because it's not it was manageable. However, it was more difficult and it took more time. Is it because it's a stem wall, a short wall, instead of an eight foot tall wall? Maybe. However, I'd much rather be standing on the ground, screwing those stiff backs on and the block popping loose as I would being nine foot in the air, or I guess realistically you'd be six foot in the air with your feet and then three feet a wall above that. But I just, I, Nudura is easier to work with. It snaps together, together. That was a horrible word. It snaps together, it holds together better, and these are four foot blocks here, whereas a Nudura block would have been an eight foot block. I think that helps also if these were eight feet and didn't have the snap, I don't think they'd pop off as easily, but we got it together. We got the uh, stiff backs on. Now what we're gonna do is we got everything set. We rechecked all of our dimensions. Again, we set the laser up over here. We checked the elevation of this front corner and we are within an eighth of an inch all the way down that wall, within an eighth of an inch down this wall. This corner here, we were a touch over an eighth of an inch high, but the, con the concrete pad is actually gonna be poured over top of this stem wall. So there's four to four and a half inches of concrete here so i'm not worried about a slight bit more than an eighth inch instead of being four and a half inches thick it's gonna be four and an eighth somewhere around in that range and then this corner over here was within an eighth inch as well you can see we've got our verticals in here and if i go down here to right parallel with the wall 
you can see that that piece of rebar sticks up above it the reason for that is we want this to help attach that pad to this stem wall that we're pouring so all of those vertical pieces of rebar there are three inches taller than the top of the stem wall so when they pour that pad it connects everything together and just makes it one nicely tied together system yeah not that one yeah there is one that's a little bit short you can see over there it's not sticking up so that's the runt of the family yeah the, the runt rebar runt rebar so we're going to get this thing foamed off all the way around we're going to put our inside stakes in so stay tuned for more all right everybody we got our foam down along the bottom i'll explain that board here in a minute got that foam down along the bottom on the outside all the way around so the outside of the block is foamed we got the inside of the block foamed as stated earlier we got our stiff backs on see the foam there all the way around here it's typically not a two by four however you can see that gap right down there we got the same gap on both sides it's about a two inch gap so my concern was that when we pour the concrete in there it's just going to come out and keep coming out so i slapped a couple of two by fours on there you can see that one on the inside as well that should keep concrete from running out there let's go back over to this corner we normally don't put plywood or anything on the icf when we bump a wall you see i foamed the top side and i wanted to keep it off of this edge because this is the uh, actual edge that everybody's going to see so i wanted to keep that foam back back there it's all going to be backfilled so it doesn't matter <clears throat> but if you look down in there you can see that pretty decent size hole on both sides and the reason for that is that bottom course that bottom corner it's a little shorter than the top corner so that's two full blocks and it just ended up that short of the wall so instead of putting a little four inch piece in there it doesn't matter on that bottom corner when we screwed it off to the plastic studs to ensure it doesn't break off and on the inside here we have another piece of plywood you can see it there and basically it's covering up the same hole so the last step of this process is to sure up our stem walls to make sure when we start pouring them they don't start kicking out and doing all kinds of crazy stuff so you can see that uh anchor there there two for each of the 16 foot walls and two for this short wall here we ran out of two by fours today so we're going to grab some two by fours we're not pouring this until tomorrow tomorrow morning we're going to figure up the concrete the quantity of concrete that we need for this stem wall and tomorrow we'll get more of these boards right here's what i'm talking about we'll get more of these boards you run a screw through there run a screw through there and that keeps this wall from tipping in and out and there will be like i said two on this wall two on that long wall we don't need one on the short wall because we have the uh common straps on the inside and the outside and then our stiff back so as long as we sure up that wall and that wall that'll keep this wall from moving and it isn't going to move this way with as short as it is and then we'll have two of those same straps right over there for that outside wall to shore it up so with that robbie we just have some cleanup to do not Pick a lot up. But... not a lot robbie's done got that most of that step taken care of got a little bit of cleanup to do and a little bit of concrete figuring we got to figure up the amount of concrete we need to fill up this wall flush to the top and then we'll screed it off flush and then the pad will be poured on that later on so we're going to figure up the concrete get some wheel call concrete for tomorrow morning stay tuned for more my grandfather all right everybody so we have this drainage line right here that the downspout i understand we'll be gone before long as well okay thank you though this downspout used to go into this pipe right here and that pipe comes over and we thought it went that way but when we dug this footer right here in this little hole that we dug it actually 90s and it went that way we're not for sure how with the footer that was there before for a different item from whenever way back who knows when but i got my witching sticks out because i need to find out where this pipe used to go and when i say used to go i'm not worried about in here where we dug it out i'm worried about over there below robbie is it here is it there is it a... and we're going to dig it up and find the other end so that we can reconnect this downspout and which is connected to this pipe to the discharge which is over in there somewhere otherwise we've got to figure out how to reroute it and that 
concrete driveway goes all the way around but the main thing that i want to show you guys this is a great example and an easy way to show you what witching really is this pipe right here is above ground however i can still witch it and i know exactly where it is so it's easy to show and explain so i'm going to hand the camera to robbie over here and show you guys how this works so you all you need this is literally i just went in to the customer's house which is mike's grandma i said hey do you have a couple coat hangers she said yeah i said i have them she said yeah so i made two pieces of wire in the shape of a 90. you can see them there the short ends is for my hands and you can wear gloves doing this but the gloves create a little bit of resistance so whenever you locate that pipe you might be six or eight inches past it whereas if you have little resistance you're going to be more accurate when i say little resistance yes i'm holding it with my fingers can you see that there robbie yeah but i'm not putting any tension on it i'm just kind of putting it right there in the crook yeah, of my finger uh, something happened to the camera yeah the off. screen goes off it's not a big deal if you touch oh. it it'll come back on um but i'm not putting any resistance in that you can see it kind of just floats back and forth right there same thing in the left hand all right now what you do is you hold them straight out away from you and you just walk through your yard and imagine that pipe isn't visible right now and it's buried in the ground this works the exact same when it's buried in the ground you just take off walking and whenever the sticks turn and cross each other that's where your pipe is and you just go straight down right tip of your toes and look right the pipe right to tip my toes and i'll show you that again it's, they're going to cross because i'm right over the pipe and as i walk away they're going to come apart okay you come back into where you think your pipe is and they're going to cross so now what robbie and i are going to do is we're going to witch this pipe and we know there's a pipe under the ground right there so i'm going to give you another example of what i just showed you with a visible pipe with an invisible pipe that we know is there because it's connected to that and we found the elbow right here i'm going to walk across this section and show you guys how it works when you can't see your pipe so they're going to cross again when i go over this pipe okay they're going to cross on that one and as i step over it they're going to uncross and when i step over the next pipe they're going to cross again and that is pretty close to right in line with that pipe exactly going in the ground the right there isn't it point is right where the pipe should be right tip my toe yep that's where it should be so we can mark that and if we dug right there typically this is good within i always tell everybody a foot we're not going to dig there on this one robbie we're going to go find the other one because we know where this one is but I try to tell everybody, give yourself a foot. So if you're going to give yourself a foot, wherever your toe is, you'd go six inches left and six inches right or six inches towards you or six inches away from you. And you're going to find that pipe within that foot or pretty close. And it might be an old pipe that's only this long. Or it might be the pipe you're looking for. So we're going to go over here and uh, Robbie's going to video this. I'm going to try to find the other side to this pipe so that we can connect it. Let's go see how this works. And I'm assuming, since there's a 90 there, right over there, I'm assuming that it went through and it came out of that bank and then it's 90 somewhere over there by that garage door. Or it's gonna kinda walk down through here and see what we find, if there's anything in the ground. We're not turning. Starting to turn. So there was something there, but I don't wanna dig out here in the middle. I wanna try to find it over there on that edge because we're gonna tie into it over there to keep that elevation of drainage. So let's kind of get down in here. So I'm thinking somewhere right in there, Robbie, is where that pipe's gonna be. And again, we're gonna give ourselves a foot. So we're gonna dig over to here and dig over to here. We're just gonna dig us a hole right here, Robbie, and see if we can find that pipe. And if we do, we'll find the end of it. Okay, well here, you take the camera. All right, let's get to digging and see what we find. Might find some treasure, Robbie. Stay tuned for more. I like treasure. All right, everybody, so here's what we were looking for. That there's that pipe. So the witching works. Now granted, we started about right here and we went this way. So there's that 12 inches of difference that I was talking about. It gets you within 12 inches. So we found this, what we'll do is we'll dig it the rest of the way out tomorrow, figure out how we gotta run it so that we get proper drainage and all that good jazz. So. I'm sure tomorrow Mike will be here and the rest of this will be on his channel, but that's it for today. As always, like, comment, and subscribe.